Good morning, CES students, family members, faculty, and staff. Today is a special day for all of us, but most special for the class of 2028. Mr. Speranza and I are pleased to be able to say a few remarks and share some of our thoughts with you on one of your last days here at CES. It has been quite a year. I know we have found a new appreciation for our students who have found a way to navigate this year in a way none of us have ever experienced before. You were and truly are amazing. We found a new appreciation for our teachers and staff who learned how to educate our students through Zoom, breakout rooms, and many different learning models. You have made the impossible possible through your hard work and dedication to your students. And our teachers and staff have found a new appreciation for our families and caregivers who supported virtual learning in a capacity we never thought possible. Many families expressed to us upon returning their students to school. I don't know how these teachers did it. They are amazing and I'm so thankful they're back in school. I think everyone has found a new appreciation for high-speed internet that works without freezing every other minute. You've learned how to read and write. You have become proficient at math, learned how to think like scientists, and have become acquainted with history in your social studies lessons. In specialist class, you've learned much about art, music, engineering, coding, technology, and library, physical fitness, and health. Along the way, you have made new friends and have been taught by many wonderful teachers. Most importantly, I think you learned what it means to be a responsible and respectful person, good citizens of your school and your community. No matter what subjects your teachers taught you over the years, what they were most concerned about was helping each one of you become the best person you can be. And we would like to take a moment to thank our wonderful PTO. They have worked tirelessly throughout the year to show their appreciation for our staff and to provide all sorts of treats for the students. The food truck was the talk of the town. The teacher gifts were incredible. I would like to thank Kara, Amanda, Bizette, and Joanne Robinson for always being willing and ready to do whatever was asked of them. Joey, I will miss texting with you 40 times a day to plan popsicle runs and gift, pick, gift card pickups. Thank you so much for all you've done. Fifth graders, our job here is done and you will soon be at the middle school starting your next journey. You leave here having learned a lot, but you have much more to learn in the years ahead. Be willing to keep on learning from your teachers, coaches, parents, caregivers, and friends. Maintain a positive attitude and willingness to try new experiences. Keep reading, be helpful, and be good to each other. Keep smiling, and most importantly, be the best you that you can be. We are happy to share with you some videos about your CES learning and some messages from the CES staff, as well as some behind the scenes footage of the staff at CES preparing for your arrival back at school. Enjoy. coming back. So we're going to have a lot more cars because people are opting not to take the buses. So I have developed a plan for the carport. All right, you with me? Let's go. We have the student crosswalk here. We have the two car lines that we've always had. Over here we have a new designated car lot area. We have the pickup and drop off safety over here at Victory Fields. And then we also have our buses that we need. Oh, Loretta! What? Loretta. Yes. Come here. All right. So on the bus side, you know how the buses always block the car line? Yes. I'm going to need you to stand in front of them and block them from moving. I can Until do the that. car line is free. Got I can it? do that. Excellent. All right, good. Thank, Thank you. you. You're, You're good. All right, so what do you guys think? Just follow the arrows. It's very, it's, it's not complicated. Guys, you got to trust me. It'll work, okay? Yes? I trust you. Okay. I got it. Yeah.
can. It is 22 feet. 22 feet. So I got to put the 20 over here and then the two. Three times two is six, and I have the two zeros. And I guess it looks like it's 660, 660 square, square feet. Yep, yep. So no. how many deaths do you think? Well, I'm wondering if it might be three more. 13. 13, 13 sounds good work. to me. Mr. Speranza, come here. All right, got it. Thanks, Dr. Christian. All right, so all the kids are coming back in now. Oh, sorry. All the kids are coming back in now, so everything's going to be three to four feet. So you got your yardstick? Oh, oh boy, where's all Mr. Right. Grimes? All right. At six all feet right. apart, we had 13. Does that mean we can have 26 desks in here? Good morning, Mr. Grimes. Hey, Principal Rock is here, everyone. Hi, Boys and girls, we're gonna get ready for a switch with Mrs. Rosenfeld, okay? So we're gonna get ready to walk in the hallway. But her room's right next door. Well, uh, yeah, but we still gotta follow the arrows. Here we go, six feet apart. Keep your six feet. Here we go. We're almost there. We're halfway around. We still got to keep going to get to Mrs. Rosenfeld. We'll get there eventually, guys. We'll get there. All right, make sure you're six feet. Hello, good morning, Miss Forrester. Oh, good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. We got to keep our six feet, guys. Principal Rock, I already have 20,000 steps and it's only 10 o'clock. All right, here we are. Follow the arrows. We're ready for our switch. Good job keeping your distance. We got our exercise. Boys and girls, good morning. Uh, today is March 2nd, uh, 2020. Uh, I'd like to start morning meeting off with a little quick uh, vocabulary lesson. So, um, first word for today is uh, synchronous. What comes to mind when you think of the word synchronous? Synchronous. What do you think about when you think of synchronous? Um, synchronous. Yes, uh, Rosie. Oh, hi. So, I remember like five years ago, um, I watched the Olympics and they had like these synchronized swimmers, you know, where they would do everything the same. Like, put your arm out. This way. This way. Yeah, and then we would do everything the same together, right? Like synchronous. Is that what you mean? Uh, not quite, not quite. Synchronous? No, we'll, we'll get back to you. We'll get there, we'll get there. Uh, next word, next word. Um, this word is Zoom, Zoom. What do you think about with Zoom? What is Zoom? What is Zoom? Yes, Chris. It's when a car goes really, really fast. Mm -hmm. Zoom, mm -hmm. zoom, 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 zoom. Right? No. No, it's not that. It's not that. All right, we'll, we'll come back to you. We'll come back. Good morning, good morning. Uh, today is June 1st, 2021. Mm. It is our morning meeting today. We're gonna shoot back and do a couple more vocabulary lessons. A little quick uh, review about what we know for some vocabulary words. I'm gonna word uh, synchronous. Who comes to mind when we think of the word synchronous? Synchronous. Yes, Rose. Oh, that's easy. That's like, you know, where you can like log on from home or yeah. log on from anywhere and you can teach us and you know, you're doing live instructions, you go into breakout rooms, stuff like that, right? Right, right. I mean, that's fantastic. Thank that you. is absolutely what synchronous is. Those prescription glasses you got. Oh yeah, I went to the pediatrician and the doctor said that I've been holed up for so long that the light, these lights made it hurt my eyes. So yeah, pretty cool, huh? They just make you so much smarter. Thank amazing, you. Amazing, amazing. All right, next word, next word. Okay, we need synchronous. What about Zoom? Zoom, what do we know about Zoom? What's our Zoom word? Oh, yes, Chris. Oh, it's, it's a way to connect with other people in your classroom. It's almost like FaceTime for school. I love the chat. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's phenomenal. That's absolutely what it is. Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys, let's get started. Ooh, you might not ever get rich. But let me tell you, it's better than digging a ditch. There ain't no telling who you might meet. A movie star or maybe someone from Hector Street. At the carport, 
Working at the carport, yeah Carport Carport, yeah When some of the work gets kind of hard This ain't no place to be if you planned on being a star Let me tell you, it's always cool And the boss don't mind sometimes if you act the fool At the carport At the carport, yeah Carport Carport, yeah Morning meeting is an awesome way to start our day. Students come into the classroom or sign on Zoom and check out a special morning message. Then we begin with a greeting, some sharing, and a fun activity. Good morning, Kyer. Good morning, Ms. Koya. Good morning, Brian. Good morning, Kyer. Good morning, Aiden. Good morning, Brian. Good morning, Lily. Good morning, Aiden. Good morning, Emmett. Good morning, Lily. Good morning, Chase. Good morning, Emmett. Good morning, Abby. Good morning, Chase. Usually in morning meeting, we get to get we get to know each other and discuss important topics. For example, Tyler, what are some techniques you use for relieving stress? Sometimes I like to take a break, take a deep breath uh, when I'm overwhelmed and stressed. By the way, sometimes we also do some fun activities. And here's one. One. Ready, set, run. Dodge right. Jump. Hey, back up. Jump. Jump. Sometimes during morning meeting, we do mindful breathing activities or yoga exercises to calm our minds and get us focused and ready for the day your breath down and focusing on inhaling and exhaling through your nose can help you push through a challenging moment. Take a slow breath in through your nose as you straighten your front leg and lift up high on your back toes. Can you lift up for the whole time that you're breathing in? When you're ready to exhale, breathe out as slowly as possible through your nose as you lower back down. Three more times. Inhale through your nose as you lift up. From 2020, a spooky year. Thanks for, Thanks watching. for watching. Enjoy, Enjoy and, and have fun. Hi, CES Trailblazers. We're from 320A. And we're going to be introducing our pumpkin project that we did this school year. Here's a picture that one of our fellow fifth grader students did. We focus on depth and blending our colors. And we practice shadowing to make it look extra realistic. We must need inspirational art projects from poets. The poets are, are three variations by Langston Hughes and the Undefeated by Kwame Alexander. This is three variations by Madison Del Rosso. This is the Undefeated by Giovanna Giuliana. This is the Undefeated by Nathaniel Angel. Hashtag May. This is Dream Variations by Ryan Pound. Zentangles is a method that uses patterns, dots, and lines. And Zentangles can be calming and enjoyable for most people. When you draw using the Zentangle method, you can discover new skills and abilities as you create your beautiful creations. Zentangles can wake up your imagination and can help you focus. 
And here are some of the tangles we did this year. Hi, we're from 320A. Um, my name is Tyler Douglas. I'm Lillian Hildre. And I'm Finn Lafferty. This year, Miss McGinn taught us how to draw a self-portrait of ourselves. And our portraits, we use different words to describe ourselves. Look at look at our wonderful details we are able to use in our drawing. Thank you, yes, for bringing out our true colors. Hey, fifth graders. We just had a few things to say. We're here to send lots of good wishes your way. We watched you create, take risks, prioritize, and self-express. These are just some of the skills we saw you possess. Your hard work paid off. Your fifth grade year is almost complete. You worked hard during the school closing and didn't show signs of defeat. Yep. Don't forget all of the things that you've learned. Remember, success is not given, always earned. Good luck. Good luck. Hey there, fifth graders. Congratulations on a finishing a fantastic year. We are so proud of you for your hard work during this pretty unique school year. We wish you the best of luck next year at the middle school. Have a great summer. We'll miss you. Hi, we're students from Mrs. Herbish fifth grade class. We're here to tell you about writing in fifth grade. This year we learned about three different modes of writing, narrative, informational, and opinion. Our classmates will explain it all to you. I'm going to tell you about the three modes of writing in the fifth grade. Whoa, before you talk about that, we need to discuss the writing process. The writing process is just like writing with those long scales of the Philadelphia art museum. What? Explain. We learned that there are several steps that we need to take in order to write a perfect piece. Sometimes we write fast, sometimes we slow down. The writing process includes planning your piece. This is the most important step. Then you need to draft. Each one of writing drafts are but you will always have to revise and edit once in drafting. Finally, you need to publish your piece creatively. Oh wow, we now have several books that will explain each mode of writing a little bit more in depth for us. Narrative piece is a story where you write about what you write about whatever you feel like and are allowed to bend the truth and write impossible things. People's stories can have different plots and impossibilities that are impossible in real life. They can have magic superpowers or look crazy different. Animals can speak English or talk in a narrative or give advice or get a character. You can make your own world in a narrative. You can also make it entirely true. All your choice. The beauty of a narrative. You play the narrative on a plot map, which has a beginning, middle, and end, and with the events in those and the climax in between. What's your plan? Feel free. You need to draft your story. Next, a plot map. Your story. Can we? Feel the words. Be theory. You feel like that. It may have details to prove your point, or with having why those affect the piece. During your narrative process, you can add better and more descriptive words to make the reader clearly understand what is going on. The editing process is getting as little grammar mistakes as possible and more thorough language. Finally, publishing. This is final details and putting a meeting or what you need to do to finish your narrative piece. This is how to go through a solid narrative story. Like this video. Opinion writing is when you have to relay your message onto somebody through writing. Have you ever tried to get something from your parents and then told them everything they would want to hear just so you got it? That's kind of like opinion writing. To start off with an opinion piece, you need to plan your piece and use the right words, such as reasons and examples. You need three reasons and examples to really prove your point. After you plan, plan you can begin drafting your body paragraphs. This is when you start with explaining your reasons. You need a transition, transition. Transition and then you need to prove your point with examples. You need to make sure you come up with solid examples so that your reader will always feel the same way as you. For the introduction, you should get the reader's attention and should tell them about the topic. So the conclusion restates your main points for a matter of how you showed your opinion. My class had to write an opinion essay on why kids should be able to use TikTok and another one on why we should have church to sit on it in class. 
This is the only way that we could have convinced our parents and teacher was to use the opinion writing process. Estoy aquí para contarte sobre la introducción. Informational writing means that you inform people. You have to write a five paragraph essay about something you're interested in learning more about. First, you have to plan out your piece by brainstorming a few questions that you want to know more about. Then you read books about your topic and take notes that pertain to your three questions. When you take notes on note cards, you need to paraphrase so you don't plagiarize. Our research reports were about social studies topics that we learned in school and wanted to investigate further. Examples of our information reports are George Washington, Susan DeAnthony, World Revolution, Abraham Lincoln, and Spies and Traders. Once our notes are completed, we plan out our introduction, then our body paragraphs, and finally our conclusion. This is our informational writing. Hey, fifth graders, congratulations. Good luck next year going to the middle school in sixth grade. Hi, I'm Mrs. Moyer. We just want to let you know how proud we are of everything you handled this year. We know you are ready for anything that comes your way. Hi, I'm Mrs. Ervis, and we wish you the best of luck at the middle school. We know you're going to do amazing things, and we can't wait to hear about your successes. We wish you so much luck. Good luck! Real Warren wants to tell you how great music was this year. You know, you know, typically we would use instruments this year, but we all know this was not a typical year. So Miss Kaplan had to get creative, and that's what she did. Even though we didn't use instruments, we still had a lot of fun in music. Even when we couldn't be together, Miss Kaplan still made music fun by using online tools like Google Music and BandLab. This year we learned how to make beats with some of our body parts. We also used Google Slides to show us how to make beats with our parts. This is a song we made earlier this year. We made this song using some of our different body parts like our legs, hands, and... In music we used websites such as Fruit Pizza, Fan Lab, and Song Maker. It was really fun to use all those websites and work on music. The first assignment we had was on Song Maker, and we were told to use drum rhythm only. In Song Maker, we press on a bunch of tiles and play the music. This song, Anger of Pizza, and it was really fun to make and experiment with different rhythms. The last website we used was Band Lab. Band, Band Lab was really fun because we got to create different beats, melodies, and songs. These websites are super fun, and they made it fun to do online. Resources are helpful during the pandemic, and we use them during class and on our own time if we like. Google Classroom is good because it's where all our assignments are held and where all our links are. Moving on to Flipgrid, it is where you can post videos, and it's controlled by your teacher, and no one but you and your teacher can see it. We use these platforms almost every day and they are very easy to use and are very helpful. I hope you guys will all go to Flipgrid and make some music videos today. In music class this year, we have learned about many musicians over the past year. For example, Elvis Presley, Bob Dylan, and even the Beatles. Here are some facts about these musicians. Did you know Elvis Presley was born in 1935? Bob Dylan was born in Minnesota in 1941. Did you know the Beatles were an English rock band that started in Liverpool? We all enjoyed music class this year. We hope you guys have a great summer. Congratulations. I'll see you at the middle school next year. You made it through two interesting years here at CES, only to make you stronger at CMS. Good luck and be well. Hi, everybody. Mr. Kane here. Hi, it's Mrs. Toomey. I just want to say congratulations on a great year at fifth grade at CES. Good luck at the middle school. I'm Lindsay Junkin. I'm Zoe Robinson. And we're going to take you on an adventure in science in room 303. This is unit one, Earth and Sun. We'll learn about shadows, day and night, solar system, and stars. What are you guys learning about? We are learning about the different moon phases. Right now, for the United States, it would be a full moon. What are you guys learning about? We are sorting our objects by their composition or what they are made of. This is Unit 2, Southeast. 
We learned about living things, non-living things, and cells, and we dug deeper into arthropods. This year, we talked about living and non-living things. We focused on arthropods, and we even did a project on it. Ubi should use me to do that. Here is our arthropod project. We were required to come up with a sort of arthropod and create a few adaptions for it that it would use in the Amazon rainforest, its habitat. Here is Unit 3, where we learn about how different variables affect the outcome in controlled experiments. How many variables can you change at once? One at a time. Here is our lifeboat experiment. What variable did you change in your controlled experiment? change the size of the boat. My favorite part was when we did a lifeboat experiment. I loved the experiment. I really enjoyed learning about the solar system. I really liked the lifeboat experiment. Ms. Bratz. Hi, I'm Ms. Dugan. This has been a unique year. Despite staying socially distant, we came together to learn and grow to finish off your elementary career. Congratulations, fifth graders. Good luck in the middle school. Here at CES, we had an awesome year in library. To learn more about what we did, let's hear from our students in room 310, starting with Gabe. One of the fun activities Mr. Freebearden taught us to do was he taught us to research an animal and ask it out questions about where it lives and what it eats. We also got to act as if we were news informers and surveying the animal. In the library, we did paper origami. With the videos provided, we were able to make various paper creatures. They turned out so cute. When we did origami in Mr. Freebearden's class, he gave us five videos to watch and create them out of sticky notes. Some were complex and some were more simple. They turned out really good. In library, we read a part of a book and then watched that scene plus chapter in the movie. After that, we compared and contrasted the two. My favorite movie slash book was Coraline. Hey, in library, guess what we made? What? Paper sunglasses. Paper sunglasses? Cool. I wish we could make them again. Yeah, but new people are coming in and making their own. Well, I know they're creative and going to do their best. In library this year, we created puppets. We all used paper, cardboard, fabric, and materials like that. After that, we posted it on Flickr. It was so fun creating them and seeing the classmates work. In library, we made crazy paper hats. And we're allowed to wear them for the rest of the day. I made a mask. I don't really know what I made, but it was really tall. In library, we had $1,000, and we had to spend exactly that. We did this on a Target website, and we learned about taxes. Congratulations, fifth graders. We are so proud of you. We will miss you. Good luck in middle school. Hi, fifth graders. We just wanted to take a minute to say congratulations on a job well done on your fifth grade school year. Uh, we are super proud of everyone for doing such a great job on what was anything but a normal school year. But whether you were on Zoom or here in person, everyone did a great job and we're super proud of you and we wish you the best of luck next year. Hello, fifth grade class. Mr. Sikolsky here. I just wanted to say congratulations on a great year. Uh, what a year it was, but um, we made the best of it. You guys did a great job persevering through all your work. Um, I wish you nothing but the best next year and stay in touch. Okay, welcome everybody to room 309. Today we're going to talk a little bit about math. Go ahead. Hello, hello everyone and welcome to our math video. We will talk about many awesome things we learned this year in math. All the skills we learned this year will help us when we move on to middle school. One thing we learned was volume in a three-dimensional shape. Volume is looking at height, width, and length of the shape. The whole point of that is to find our volume, or how much space there is in something. We also learned about the importance of estimating the multiplication division algorithm. This is a much quicker and easier way to solve math problems. These strategies can help us pretty much anywhere, from deciphering taxes to finding out how much you need to pay rent. 
We learned about um, interpreting remainders with long division as well as multiplication with long numbers. And in just a few months ago, we learned about how to multiply and divide decimals and how to pronounce them. We learned when solving a problem with decimals, you need to estimate first, solve with whole num solve as whole numbers, then put the decimal back in. Decimals can help us figure out finances when we get older. In order of operations, PEMDAS tells us the order to solve, and we cannot forget those group of people. Triangles are classified by angles and sides. Quadrilaterals are polygon polygons that have four sides, like a parallelogram, square, rhombus, trapezoid, and a rectangle. We weren't using Nearpod. We found our assignments on Google Classroom. We used to upgrade to sell what we know. We tested ourselves with quizzes, Kahoot, and were uh, and we're on our keyboards with IXL and Reflex. We would like to say thank you to our amazing teachers that taught us everything we know. Congratulations, fifth grade. <laughs> we're so proud of you. Good luck at middle school. Hi, I'm Mrs. Whitberg. Hi, I'm Mrs. Naylor. Hi, I'm Mr. Burgle. Always reach for the stars and continue to shine. You are well prepared for your next, next academic adventure. It's been such a pleasure working with you all this year and some of you the last two years. Good luck next year, we're gonna miss you. Congrats CES fifth graders on an awesome year. You guys are beyond prepared for the middle school and we can't wait to see how well you guys do. Bye everyone. Bye. We learned so much valuable information in health this year. Let's listen to 306 and everything we learned. My favorite part um, of health this year was when we learned about Tabasco and all the dangerous things of smoking. I'm, I'm learning about nutrition and physical activities. I love learning about the human body. I like learning about nutrition. I like learning how to read two books. I like learning about I like learning about healthy and not healthy food. I like learning about healthy and healthy um foods. I like, to learn, I like learning about the human skeleton. I like learning about the healthy foods. I like learning about nutrition. I like learning about the human body. I like learning about the human body. I like learning about uh, which foods are healthy and which foods are not. I like learning about being healthy. Congratulations, have a great next year. Good luck at the middle school. Be amazing, everyone. We'll miss you. Hey, everyone. I'm Mr. Wachinko. And Mr. Benny. We just want to say that we're so proud of you kids, and like it's been an awesome year with you, and we're so proud of you. You rocked it this year. Good luck next year. Uh, we'll be keeping tabs. Congratulations. Congratulations. Hi, Miss Dugan's class 319 did social studies. Yeah, the British are selling so they tax in America. The way the British taxed America was through the cost of cloth and newspapers. The colonists had to buy stickers to put in their stuff so they didn't get, so they didn't get taxed. Can I please buy a sticker so I don't get taxed? Okay, sure. Here's your sticker. Thank you. The colonists protested and the British taxed them more. All this tax stuff is really annoying. I want to keep my money. I don't care where you're going. We're going to keep taxing you until we get money back. The Stamp Act led to the actions of the Boston Tea Party. Boston Massacre. Thomas Preston told his troops not to fire with their guns. They fired into a big crowd. Thomas Preston and his troops were arrested. Total of five colonists died. The colonists were daring for his troops to shoot. The Boston Tea Party took place on December 16, 1773. The middle was that the taxes on the tea were too expensive and unfair to our the colonists. The colonists opened an extremely heavy chest of tea with axes. They ended up dumping over 342 chests of tea overboard. They were also disguised as Native Americans. It ended up as one of the largest protests ever. Hello, we are doing the Revolutionary War. Why did the war start? The war started because of events like the Boston Massacre and the Boston Tea Party, also because of things like taxes. When did the war start and end? The war started in 1775 and ended in 1783. Who 
won the war. The colonists won the war becoming their own country, the USA. We did the Constitution. The Articles of Confederation. The Articles of Confederation were created on November 15, 1777. The Constitutional Convention in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania was in May and September of 1787. Um, the Bill of Rights is the first ten amendments to the Constitution. We did civil rights. Although many had wanted to join the war effort earlier, they were prohibited from enlisting by a federal law dating back to 1792. The Underground Railroad was a network of secret routes and safe houses. African Americans went to a diner for a sentence to fight for their rights and would not leave it to real fat. Martin Luther King Jr. gave speeches for black lives and many did other things. Women's rights. Women had no rights, so they fought for their rights every day, no matter what was going on around them. Nineteenth Amendment states that all women have the right to vote. It was passed in 1920. During elections, 18 women casted casted ballot, ballots, although women got arrested for fighting for rights. Women deserved what they fought for. Support. Women. Suffrage. Friends, congratulations! Do your best. Good luck in middle school. We're so proud of you. Hi, I'm Mrs. Forster, and I'm Mrs. Rosenfeld. We are so proud of you, fifth graders, of your flexibility this year, your responsibility this year, and all of your abilities this year. So take those abilities and be trailblazers at Colonial Middle School. We're so proud of you, Colonial Elementary School class of 2021. Fifth grade students have learned so much in ECT and they're ready to move on. But before they move on, they want to share their journey with you. In fourth grade, we learned about industrial engineers and we also learned about simple machines and how they impact our daily life. We also learned about the engineering design process which contains as connected and create and improve. During fifth, during fifth grade, we learned lots about the ecosystem and oil spills and how it affects food webs. The past years were full of lessons and fun memories, but we're ready to go to the sixth grade and all of the memories that come with it. Thank you, Mr. Springs and Mr. Cole, for being also amazing team teachers. Are you ready? All right, got the cock ball. That's the one you're doing. Go ahead. Nice. Make sure you guys are copying down your observations, scribbling in on the slides. Congratulations, fifth graders. We are so proud of you. Congratulations, fifth graders. We are so proud of you. Good luck at the middle school. Hi, I'm Mrs. Toomey, and this is Homeroom 312, and we're going to tell you about reading. In shared reading, there were four units. They were creating a community, leadership, change, and perseverance. This year, we learned about signposts. Oh, a moment. How about this change things? Again and again, why does this keep happening? Tough question. What does this question make me wonder? Memory moment. Why is this memory important? Words of the wiser. What is the life lesson and how may it affect the character? Contrast and contradiction. Why is the character doing that? Hi, I'm Aiden, and this is the Wonderful Wonders Book full of wonderful stories. These are some of the many stories we have in the Wonders Book. What's one of you? Where the mountain meets the moon, and the boy who invented TV. This year in reading, we learned how to take marginal notes. Does your book have marginal notes? No. Well, it should. Marginal notes are notes that you make in a book, sharing your thinking and saying your feelings. Marginal notes are the foundation of interest and thinking. And the good news is, you can start making marginal notes too. This is figurative language. language. Hyperbole, exaggeration, simile, as quiet as a mouse, idiom, an expression like it's raining cats and dogs. Alliteration, repetition with the first consonant sound. Onomatopoeia, when the sound of a spoken word imitates the sound being described. A 
And then four, we have a compare two unlike things without using like or as, like trees in our river. Personification means give human qualities to non-living objects or ideas, like the star or wind tunnel. That has to be in language. This year we learned about reading novels. We read books by Jerry Spinelli. We read Ringer. We read Eggs. We read Stargirl. We read Crash. We read the Hey, fifth graders, uh, congratulations on a pretty epic and memorable year. Uh, I wish you all the luck going to middle school. Um, you guys survived this craziness, so you will do wonderful, wonderful things next year. Hi, everyone. It is Mrs. Craven, and I just want to say how proud we all are of each and every one of you. And just like Mr. Kubanov said, you did it in a year that no one will forget and you will remember forever. So take everything you learned this year with you to the middle school, and we wanna wish you great success. Bye friends. Bye guys. Hi everyone, room 305 is gonna talk about all of the fun activities we learned in gym this year. Learning soccer in gym is really fun because not only learning soccer is a skill, but you also learn how to work together and build teamwork and shiny things. Don't forget to encourage your teammates. Hi, I'm Nathan, and in gym we learned a sport called hockey. It is fun and engaging. There are many tricks to it. Such as a baseball. Or passing. Stick handling. And even shooting. Goal! This is how we went to roll the ball. Just call it a And this is how we learn to balance the ball. Tennis is a great source of energy. Tennis is a good exercise for the upper and lower parts of the body. Tennis is a lifelong sport. You can do it competitively or professionally. Basketball is fun because it teaches you things like teamwork and leadership. Lacrosse is also fun because we can have fun and work as a team. As well involves passing, throwing, and shooting. And lacrosse involves a series of throwing, catching, and scoring. On the gym, these sports can help you get exercise and stay healthy. Congratulations, fifth graders. You're going to do fantastic in the rest of your school journey. We're so proud of you. Hello, fabulous fifth graders. Congrats on a fun, filled two years at CES. We really enjoyed working with each of you over the last two years. And we admire your flexibility and perseverance over your time here at CES. We wish you the best as you continue your reading journey at CMS. Good luck. Congratulations. Bye. Congratulations. Congratulations. I'm Mrs. Forster, and we're here live reporting from the CES cafeteria. If you want to get lunch at the cafeteria, What are you giving the kids? Either that or nuggets or mac and cheese. Okay, and how do you like to eat here? I love the food here because it tastes amazing. Do you like buying or packing? I like buying food better because it is so good and there are so many great options. What is your favorite food? I see, yes, my favorite meal is pizza. But how's the snack bar is the yes though? from the snack bar. What would you like for snack today? Uh, can I please have some Doritos, please? Yes, what can I? 94232. Uh, Doritos, please? Sure. Thank you. Hello, what did you get from snack bar today? I got some Doritos. Oh, nice. I like eating at the cafeteria table. So what did you do yesterday? So yesterday I had two big water fights with my friends. That's cool. Um, I did videos <coughs> in the like um, water and then I also had a, um, I also went for a bike ride with my dad and my dad. Oh, yesterday was a perfect one for a um, bike ride. Um, uh, also the day before that I went in the pool again for, um, because it was super hot. Well, I went um, at the mall. There was a school bench. I think there's, there's another place at CES that students eat lunch. Really? What's it like? This is Ellie Cole reporting live from the Boardroom Bistro. 
Now, Brayden, what do you do here in the bistro? Well, first I flip over the stop sign so it says go, so that the lunch aides know that the table is clean and people can sit. And then I sit down and eat my food. Oh, really? What else is needed about the bistro? Well, they told us to go to snack bar at the same time as the lunchroom, so it's fair. Wow, that's interesting. Caroline, what do you do with your free time in the bistro? Well, I like talking with my friends and making them laugh after I drink my water that makes me go crazy. Wow, interesting. And you, Colin? Well, sometimes I eat in the bistro, and sometimes I eat in the cafeteria, which reminds me. Back to you, Bobby. What do you guys do when you clean up? Breaking news! A young man by the name of Dom has set a new school record for most trays returned with 370. What do you do with the trays after you're done eating? Um, first you empty out your trash in the bin, then you put your tray on the table so the lunch aide can come and get it, then you go back to your seat. Next question, what do you do with, what happens to the trays when you return them? Um, uh, a lunch aide will come and take it and clean it uh, to be reused. And that's it for the news! Congratulations, fifth grade, we are so proud of you. You guys had a great year, and we know you're going to do great in middle school. Good luck. Here we have the students of 311 sharing about technology class with Mr. Wilson. Binary code is fun because you get to make letters out of zeros and ones. You can use binary codes and program computers. We played a binary code game where you had to figure out the binary code, the numbers before the whole screen was going. Another fun program was Scratch. We can make animation and games with the website Scratch. We animate our names and we can make them appear and disappear. We made games that were season themed. We created a maze with portals and obstacles. These are the two programs that we use throughout the year. Hey, congratulations, fifth graders. We're so proud of you. Good luck at CMS. 316 loves recess. Um, we are going to talk about some of the stuff that we can do at recess um, for virtual kids, and one of them is watch TV. You can spend more time with family. You can also do things that you wouldn't be able to do at school. Hello, we're doing our section on wall ball. In mobile, you can play with or against your friends, and there's always equipment to play with. There's also basketball to play with your friends, and you never need to argue because you can just play in teams. There are many things you can do at soccer, such as... Play football, play soccer, play frisbee, play tag with your friends, and many more. There are so many cool things to do about on the field. You can play soccer, do jump rope, or just hang out with friends. It's that fun of a time. The green is cool because the rock. The rock is a cool place and the greens are in it because you can just hang out with your friends, stand on it, dance on it, and just have some fun. You know, it's really fun. We also like the green part because you can play basketball. You can't all, you also don't have to just play basketball. You can run around. Here's some fun stuff to do on the playground slides. One, there are slides. Two, there are ruffles. And three, there are ladders. And lastly, but not least, there's a tic-tac-toe board. This is the red side of the playground. It has a lot of fun and different things. Such as the swings, chains, and the monkey bars. In a world where you can be anything. And be kind. We are so proud of you, fifth graders. Congratulations! Hi, I'm Mrs. Moyer from room 327. What a roller coaster ride it's been this year. We've learned new ways to teach and you've learned new ways to learn with the various modes of learning this year. Fifth graders, you showed resilience. You rose to every challenge 
as we had ever-changing modes of learning this year. Your teachers will be forever proud, and we know you can handle anything that comes your way. We are going to teach you how we learned virtually. Even though it was hard, we all worked together to learn. During virtual learning, everyone was together on Zoom. We were able to interact with each other and break up rooms with Miss Moyer in small group. Mrs. Moyer called us Zoomies, but now we have moved from Zoomies to now being called Roomies. Next up was hybrid. Hybrid mode was when you come into school for a few days in person and then the rest of the week you were virtual at home. The positive is we're seeing friends and your teacher actually in person and not on Zoom. It was nice to get to play at recess again with classmates and even visit the CES snack bar. Even though it wasn't our entire class and you had to stay six feet apart, you could still get to work and play with your classmates in person and on Zoom. staying six feet apart and having some people still on Zoom, we still had fun with learning with our friends and teachers. A lot of things had to change. We wanted to thank our teachers and all of our fifth grade classes for handling such an ever-changing year. We wish all the fifth graders a great rest of the year and all the best at CMS next year. <laughs> Here are some words we will never forget from our roller coaster ride year. Hi. You're You're muted. Muted. All right, specialists, it's time for us to get together and decide how we're gonna say goodbye to the fifth graders this year. It's been such an unusual year. Let's go around the room and see what ideas we've come up with. Mrs. Carbo, let's start with you. You're on mute, Mrs. Car Ms. Carbo, we can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah it's better, but you're upside down. Oh, hold on a second. Right. Is that better? Now we got that, you. Can you see me? Can you hear me? We're all good now? There you go. All right. So I don't know. I was thinking maybe we can make like a rhyming poem. That might be kind of cool. We each can have a little line in the poem, make it rhyme. Maybe, maybe a little rap, a little song with it. All right, that sounds yeah. good. Yeah, all right, well, let's write that one down. Uh, how about Mr. Cole? Where is Mr. Cole? Uh, uh, Mr. Wilson, oh, hold on, give me one second, Mr. Wilson. Yes? Uh, are you there, Mr. Cole? Yes, I am totally here. That is me. What all are we right. doing? Hey, oh, Mr. Freebaron, what's your idea? Uh, you know, I was searching the internet for a couple of things and I decided I think they would really enjoy this one song. It's amazing. <laughs> Mr. Freebaron, that song is so 80s, that's not gonna work. Let's go to Mrs. McGinn. All right, I have an idea for the home fries. I got an idea. Can I screen share? Yeah. Yes. Okay, okay, okay. Hold on, let me get there. Give me a second. All right. Can everybody see this? Oh, my. Yeah. But wait, 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 wait. Mr. Wilson, remember, not everybody got to see you this year. <laughs> so I thought maybe they could go ahead and use pictures and like annotate, like with drawing. Kind of help out with like i don't know mustache hair anything right well that probably is the most I, hair i've had in a decade but i'm not so sure about that idea either hmm. okay let's let's go to mrs kaplan and see what she's got hey guys free baron just shared this great song with me i think the kids are gonna love it I propose we have all the kids learn how to sing this for their fifth grade closing ceremony. Pen drop. What is up with that song? Uh, Mr. Bram, 
What, what about you? Hmm. Yeah, I really don't know. I'm good with whatever you guys think. All right. Well, I guess that's all we're getting from Mr. Bram today. How about we go to, to Mr. Wilson? Are you there, Mr. Wilson? Oh, well, kind of. Uh, I'm having a little bit of technical difficulty, and right now I can't figure out how to fix. Just, just so you know, I'm not really a potato. I'm not really a potato. So since I can't fix it, I, I can just stay like this for our meeting while we're brainstorming if you want. But again, I'm not really a potato. Well, let's, well, what the heck? Well, since we're all finally here, let's just, let's just do this. Hi, I'm Lex Smith from Class 319. This year, from being virtual for most of the year and switching from hybrid and now all in person, I have learned that being focused is very important. Um, I And I realize that I have to try to stay more on task and keep up with all my assignments so I'm able to get throughout the year. Yeah, have a great summer. Bye. Hi, guys. It's Ava McCauley from 316. And one thing I learned from this crazy fifth grade year is that you have to learn from your mistakes and it's okay to make mistakes. And if it, even if you do, you just learn from them and you can always ask your teacher to help you with your mistake or anything like that. So yeah, have a great summer. Hi, Juan. I am from class 306. And one thing I've learned this year was always treat your side when to be treated because you don't want to have respect and make sure show others and give others respect. And um, remember, Colonel, there's no place for hate, so please don't hate, just appreciate it. Bye! Hi, my name is Marjorie Bennett from Room 327. I know we can all agree that this year was, well, a lot of things, but something I realized was that you just have to try your best. Try your best to make friends, try your best to have fun, and try your best to be yourself. I know there are a lot of teachers in this school, but my teachers, Mrs. Moy and Mrs. Erbis, helped this school year to be easier for me and my classmates. I want to thank all the staff, teachers, and principals for making this year awesome. Hello, everyone. I'm Ashton Nguyen from 316, and I would just love to share that this was a great school year, and it, even though it was tough going virtual sometimes, in person sometimes, no matter where you are right now, just this school year was great. All teachers, students, everyone. Have a great summer, everyone. Bye. Hi, my name is Alexander, CUI, from 327. I realized that being in the room is more fun than in Zoom. And keeping things organized is essential to school. Bye. Hey guys, I'm Ray Startrell from room 325, and this year in fifth grade, I learned that being organized is not as easy as I thought. Hi, I'm Caitlin Hector, and I think that fifth grade is a lot harder than fourth grade. And it's like, you kind of learn the same things, but you got a little more into detail about them. So like, we learned about, um fractions last year but we learned about like how to convert them in fifth grade so i think that everything in fifth grade was a little more challenging but it was a lot more fun. hey everyone i'm avery crump and i'm from homeroom 316. i'd say the most important thing i've learned this year was to persevere and to always try your best because even when things get tough it's important to move on with them instead of quitting congrats to all fifth graders for completing fourth and fifth grade Hello, my name is Angie, and my and my homeroom is three oh five. And I hope we have an amazing last year of the year, so school year, fifth grade. So let's hope we can make it fun. 
because I will miss the fifth grade, but we will have a great time in sixth grade. So thank you to Miss Arrow. Hi, I'm Adele Gottschalk from room 320, and what I learned this year is kindness. It really matters to me because being kind is the best way to get what you want, and also being kind helps others too. It makes them smile, and you always want to see people smile. Hi, my name's Nicole Cough from 303, and here are some lessons I learned. So first, take your time because when going fast, you could do a step wrong. Um, and second, and also sometimes when making mistakes, it isn't that bad because you can learn from them. Breaking news. I represent to you Zoe Robinson from Class 3 or 3 in 5th grade. So, for lesson learned, I said don't copy other people's work because if they get wrong, you will too. Take your time because if you don't, you're going to get most of the answers. Yeah, learn from your mistakes. Making a mistake isn't bad because you learn from it. And pay attention or you're not going to know what to do. And learn manners or people will think you're mean and be respectful. So, yeah, that is why I think. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ethan Vasquez from Room 308, and what I learned was that you need to get through your old troubles. All you have to do is persevere through it, and everything will be fine. Hi, CES. My name's Tegan Stanley from Home Room 327, and something I learned this year in fifth grade was that it's okay to make mistakes, and you have to learn from them. And when you do make those mistakes, you can't get frustrated about it. So I just wish everybody a great summer, and have fun. Bye. Hi, I'm Tyler Young from 308, and this year has been really challenging and wacky because of COVID. A uh, quote to represent this school year is, sometimes you can't always see the light at the end of the tunnel, but when you do, you'll come to a better place. Stay safe and positive. Have a good summer. My name is Will. I'm from 325. I think my lesson learned is, um, like, no matter how, um, no matter how you're scuffed, uh, a year is uh it can still be like um made uh, made fun and good all right thank you hi my name is grant from room 327 um a, uh something i learned this year is the skill of being flexible by moving your stuff from in the classroom and then like you know moving stuff from in the classroom then to home and uh it was really fun this year. Um, I'll miss CES. I'll miss uh, all the teachers and students. So. Bye. Hi, my name is Sophia Patel. I'm from room 310. And this is one thing I learned from fifth grade this year. Is that if you work hard and believe in yourself, you can achieve any goal that you believe in. And have been working hard for this year. Hi, it's Lucas from 325. Um, this year was an interesting year because I was um, at home in the beginning of the year and and now um, I'm f- five, five days a week. This year has been a really fast year and a really interesting one too. Bye.